Hey guys and welcome back to Twitchy Place Cowboy Space Program where last time we were busy setting up the must go to resort for the moon and we were but one procedure away from making this an actual reality and getting all the monies from the contract. Unfortunately, Jeb being the ultimate cowboy that he is, forgot to actually bring any tools along with him to make this a reality, meaning that, well, Basically, we had something that we had to do this episode, and that is try and get a wrench up to Jeb on the moon so we can complete this moon base and, like, everything will be great and we have a tourist destination to go to then. But, of course, I never put on a mission with only one objective. This is also, as well as a wrench delivery mechanism, Jeb's return voyage pod thing. I have very imaginatively entitled this one the 22k wrench because that's how much it costs to put this mission on, and that is all we're doing is delivering a wrench and bringing Jeb home, obviously. Anyway... Flight went absolutely wonderfully. We just got up, did some staging, moved ourselves up into a circular orbit, and with the nearest of thought, moved ourselves out towards the moon. After sticking ourselves into a beautifully circular capture orbit, well, it's a bit eccentric, but we'll, we'll make do with that, uh, we found out that being in a perfectly equatorially aligned orbit is not great for coming up to meet the moon outpost. It turns out we are, oh, I don't know, let's take a guess at 10 degrees off of the equatorial here. So th that's not great, but... It is more than dealable, especially when we're uh, using pods that are as light as this, so the delta V to change the inclination is like quite minimal. And we look to be on quite a good course for coming down on top of these two craters here. Now what I've been doing to try and make sure that my trajectory is lined up for a nice pinpoint precise landing is using basically the same technique as I would with an orbital rendezvous. I am pushing my retrograde marker towards the pink marker that is my targeting reticule in the vain hope that maybe, just maybe, we can come down close to each other. Unfortunately, this first attempt at landing didn't go too well. You can see here, I am about a kilometre away here, and I'm just thinking, well, can we try and get closer? Of course we can try and get closer. We have all this fuel available to us, and there is even more fuel over the base over there. So giving it a bit of a rock on the RCS, we do a little bit of break dancing. Obviously, we're trying to get ourselves pointed in the right direction. Once you just, like, fall over in the wrong way, you can do nothing but do a little, like, handstand and stuff and try and make yourself point in the in the correct orientation but once that's done you, you point yourself over burn towards the base uh burn upwards rather than trying to slow myself down to to get us over there with two with minimum of fuss and eventually come down for a nice perfect landing it's still a little bit distant but that that should do nicely Okay, coming over here to take control of Jebediah, we're going to go and get in to that little pod over there. We need the wrench out of it, of course, and that, that is the only way we're going to be able to do things. So climbing over, thankfully, these landing legs nice and low so we can get Jebediah to just climb up and get in there. Open up our inventory and be like, hang about, where's this wrench gone? Ah, oh, no. Where, where, seriously, like, I put it in there. Here's a little bit of footage to show that I really did put it in there. But it's not there anymore, and this is very confusing to me. So we're going to leave it there as a pod and try for another method of delivery. This time we are going to use tourists, because tourists are just guys that can sit there and hold on to stuff and maybe pass it over to Jebediah when the time comes, right? Wrong! Because tourists are absolutely useless. They might very well be able to hold on to that wrench and fly away up to the moon with the aid of the computer-controlled system. But when they get there, Jebediah cannot either get into the, the pod, because the tourists are in there, and the tourists cannot get out of the pod, and there is no way that we can make a handover from rent from person to person with that wrench so yeah that's a bit rubbish thankfully i had a quick save set up so what we can actually do is just reload get rid of this contract and everything's kind of all right right now that's not that's not cheating no with two failed missions and hundreds of thousands of routes wasted twitch tech industries has to turn to the man that is fast becoming known as the fixer what he lacks in piloting knowledge is more than made up with his technical and manual know-how. This is the man who, for many, many years, both in-game and in real life, has come to the aid of Twitch Tech and any other space program that finds itself deep in the vacuum, floundering around with the restrictions of the parts or modules they brought with them. Yes, Bill Kerman! Bill Kerman is the man that can. Or I suppose Kerbal that can, but, you know, that doesn't rhyme quite as well. And thanks to his extraordinary use of the computer console, he manages to bring himself down within mere metres of the actual moon base that we have here. Indeed, we are so close that we don't really need to do any sort of further tweaking of our landing site. But that's never stopped us in the past, and you can rest assured that's not going to stop us now. So we are about 10, 20 metres away, and I'd like to put us down within a couple of metres so we don't only have to like stretch the thing out a little way, and so we can find out where all the... Uh, connection nodes are. Um, we've already gone 
far too high up in the air. This is, this is one of the problems that I had at this point in time, was I just came too far off the floor. But altitude is life, and there we go. We have done well. I think this is good enough to uh, start thinking about how we're going to get out, as long as the nozzle is pointed in the right direction, which I think it is, despite all these wobbles and stuff. We then spend the next couple of minutes realising that things have changed. And this is quite vexing, really. So it used to be that when you pick stuff up from the Kerbal Attachment System, or Kerbal Kerbal inventory system, these things went on your back and you could carry them around and everything would be fine and dandy. Unfortunately this is no longer the case. You can see that I'm trying to attach it to my Kerbal, see if that works that doesn't work. Try and attach it further around and I realise that I just, I do not even have a clue as to what key to press to make the attachment system work again. Thankfully I live in the age of the internet and that means that I can go online and find out whatever it is I need to find out. So we had a quick break, we went to the wiki, we came back armed with the knowledge of the X key, that is the attach key, and after shuffling around the the modules of the base a little bit managed to get ourselves a connector port onto this fuel tank from there we moved it forward to the first landing pod that bill is going to be returning home in gave that a quick refuel because unfortunately even with an efficient landing as we had we didn't actually have enough to take us back again and instead of abandoning jeb to his death by radiation or slow starvation on the moon bill actually comes back and makes sure that jeb's pod is also refueled for flight giving jeb the opportunity to show him just how ungrateful he is by making flight before bill's even back inside his escape pod. The return trajectory is as easy as always. We find out which way the moon is facing, or at least which way it is going round in its orbit. We make sure that we burn our Apple apps to leave the moon's sphere of influence out the rearwards of that of that orbit, and that then starts to bring down our Perry apps towards the surface of Kerbin, and we just make sure that we are grazing the very top of the atmosphere, because as the more observant of you would have noticed, I forgot to put any heat shields on this particular return craft, and coming back from the moon... That is quite some speed and heat to deal with. With Jebediah's corset, it's time to come back and do the exact same thing with Bill Kerman. Though this time we're going to do it just a little bit more aggressively because we know where we're going and we know what we're trying to do here. So the first thing, of course, is to try and push our Perry apps, not our Perry apps, our Apple apps, out the back of the moon's sphere of influence. And by back, of course, I mean retrograde towards the moon's uh, direction of motion as beautifully shown by the map view here we're going to try and bring this down as close as we can right now but as you can see my apple apps is going over the top of the moon's orbit so we are obviously giving ourselves a bit too much velocity in the wrong direction which in theory is super easy to deal with we just wait until we leave the moon's sphere of influence and then make retrograde burns to pull down our peri apps and everything should be okay right apart from we ran out of fuel where our peri apps is still something like 30 kilometers above where it needs to be in fact that's 40 kilometers i do stand corrected i do apologize leaving us really with only re one recourse of action to take advantage of and that is of course the fact that we have infinite uh, eva fuel as long as you get back into your pod and back out again so we're going to like push on our engine because obviously we were facing in a retrograde direction until the Kerbal Engineer unit at the top left of my screen there tells me that we are down with a periaps um i'm looking at about 50, 60 kilometers. I'll take a 40, but that is a little bit deep for me, really. With the aero braking maneuvers planned for and set, it's time to go down into that beautiful atmosphere and see what happens. Now, obviously, with Bill being the most aggressive, he was the first one to get down and into the atmosphere. There was plenty of lights, plenty of fireworks, but he came out with quite a high uh, apoapsis on the other side. Unlike Jebediah, who was the second down into the atmosphere, uh, he, de he delved down quite deep compared to Bill and managed to find himself with an apoapsis so low that he actually got round for his other passes before Bill even came down and he made this perfectly beautiful touchdown on the night side of the planet. It's always the most boring types of landing is on the night side, but this is where we are and this is what we got to deal with. Jebediah coming back home after setting up Moonbase Alpha. Bill's landing was of course no less spectacular, the plasma coming off his vehicle as he was landing was still just as um, impressive and streaky maybe, but yes he comes down just fine, makes a perfect landing, maybe with a little bit less fanfare than Jebediah even though he was by far the more important link in this particular mission. Bill Kerman, the fixer. And with Bill and Jeb both successfully extracted from the moon, I think we can claim Moonbase Alpha, the premier tourist destination, or at least it will be when we get some tourists, on the moon is finished! Yay! And with that, I will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time when we're going to Minmus for science, because I want sciencing to get this ore detection and mining done, because hey, who doesn't want to get off-world fuel?